I had the idea to build a R2R digital to analog converter using nothing but some graphite from a pencil and a paper. And I looked it up on YouTube and it looked like no one had done it before and I was pretty surprised. So that's why I'm making this quick video. I'm going to show you how I made um, an R2R DAC, an 8-bit DAC, using an Arduino um, and a piece of paper and a pencil. So here's the DAC. It's pretty simple. If you know basic electronics, you probably already know how it works. It's a standard R2R ladder. Uh, it's basically a series of successive voltage dividers. And uh, this one right here is an 8-bit one. And you'll see that because there are 8 traces that um, have twice the resistance as the traces that are connecting them. So if these traces here that I drew with the pencil are 2 kiloohms, this is 1K, 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 1K. And this is another 2K right here. And I'm getting the output um, all the way through the end there. I'll talk about that why I'm getting the output down there in a second. This is an 8-bit one, but it could be easily scalable to anything larger than that. Just for the purposes of this video, I kept it to 8, and that's plenty to make decent looking sine waves and even some basic music and stuff. When I first did this, I was using an FPGA, but I decided it would be easier um, for the video if I used an Arduino, and that way more people could uh, easily do this themselves. So you'll see I have an Arduino Uno, and everything connected with a million jumper cables, as you can see. And I have a you know, parallel interface connected right here, my ground point here, and then I have this green wire, this is the output going to an oscilloscope probe, and also going to a breadboard here where I have wired up um, just a simple buffer circuit with an op amp. It's just a voltage follower, and um, because if you touch the output, this is very, very high impedance. If you touch the output of it with your fingers, um, this, the output sine wave or whatever you're making will drop to almost zero volts. It's very high impedance, so that's why I'm buffering it so that we can play it through a, an audio amplifier. Now I uploaded some code to the Arduino where I can make a simple 440 hertz, which is an A, a sine wave. I'll show you that on my oscilloscope in a second, and then we'll take a look at the uh, FFT for that, and I'll explain uh, why I'm taking the output. I'm tapping it all the way out here. I have the output going through this op amp here as a voltage follower, like I said, and then I have the tech scope down here um, showing us the output in the time domain and then the Agilent scope showing us the output on the frequency domain. I have the tech scope broken out to a bigger monitor so it's easier to see, and uh, you'll notice it's a pretty good looking sine wave, and that's um, we're measuring 442 hertz, so that's pretty darn close. It's 1.6 volts RMS, which is I think like 2, 2 and a quarter volts um, peak to peak. And uh, it's looking pretty good, you know? It's a pretty smooth waveform. And if we take a look at the FFT, so now we're looking in the frequency domain. You know, that's our fundamental frequency. And it's at 434, 440 hertz, as we'd expect. We have some harmonics that are moving all over the place. I'm going to capture that just so we can look at it still. Next harmonic, we'd expect this to be around 800 and a little, little over 850. Yep, uh, 890 hertz. Next one here I'd expect at 13, 1.3 kilohertz, yeah, 1.327, so it's pretty good, and I can even put this on my distortion analyzer later and look at the total harmonic distortion, but it's just a fun little project, you know, drawing a DAC with paper. And when I first built it, the output was looking really bad, so that's why I built this filter circuit here. Um, there's just a ceramic cap, and I'm building a low-pass filter, the series resistor is this, and then I have a ceramic cap in parallel. And if I take that cap off, you can see the effect on the uh, FFT and everything like that. So now that I removed that low pass filter, you can see it no longer resembles a sine wave, and we have all this stuff going on. It's uh, It really looks quite awful. So I'll put that filter back on right now hold on and uh, much smoother it you know, chops down the amplitude as well but it's uh, it, m it looks much much better oh and I forgot to show you the FFT without the filter it's kind of funny yeah so you'll notice the second third and fourth Harmonics, I mean, everything's just massive, so 
again, fundamental frequency, and then after that, the peaks of the harmonics are almost, you know, they're not diminishing as much as they were before. So it's a pretty awful waveform. It's pretty ugly. And then if I pop that filter back on, it's instantly going to look so much better. Yeah, there you go. Now I have this buffer circuit going here. So um, I hooked up some Apple earbuds, and um, we can listen to the sine wave, and it does sound pretty good. The idea of direct digital synthesis is pretty powerful, and you can make some pretty complicated waveforms, such as these. Uh, all of these were generated with an FPGA, but they could be easily done with an Arduino. And um, not, they may not seem very useful, but uh, it goes to show that you can generate very complicated waveforms with just a simple 8-bit R2R ladder. So I hope you learned something, and thanks for watching.